Finding the right property is a bit like baking a cake. It's a matter of finding the right ingredients, the population growth, the price point, the rental yields, and putting it all together to find that perfect property that's going to perform in the long run. Today, I want to talk about three ingredients out of a very long list that will help you secure the right property in the right location. So let's jump straight into it. So today I'm actually filming down in, in one of our Airbnb properties. It just seemed like a somewhat different to shoot and a nice quiet location. So hopefully the audio comes through nice and clear and hopefully this is a really enjoyable video. So today I wanna to talk three tips, three ingredients per se that you can look for when putting together the cake, when looking putting together that perfect property deal that will help that property perform in the long run. The first ingredient that I think you should be keeping your eye out for and something that's worked really well for me over the last five, six years is buying properties below replacement cost. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, whether you're looking at units or houses, getting into those properties and buying them cheaper than what it would actually cost to replace them and build them new. This means that you're instantly getting value compared to those greenfield developments where people are building those properties new. If you're buying it cheaper than what someone can build it new, there's a good chance that property will continue to perform. Now, this has been really evident over the last few years with the unit market. The unit market, we saw the cost of replacing units skyrocket and go up and up and up, while unit prices stayed pretty much flat for the last decade. And it's only been recently in the last 12 months that they've started playing catch up. So when people were telling me over and over again, there's no capital growth in units, units never go up in price, I kept looking at the replacement cost and going, this unit that I'm buying for 160, 170,000, this would cost around 300,000 to build new today. So there's no risk of new supply coming into the market at that price point, and there's only upside. Fast forward a few years and the rental market's obviously getting tighter and tighter, and now those cheap properties, there's so much demand there, but they're still far below replacement costs. The new supply, new units aren't coming into to my local market anyway, or into a lot of regional markets. It's only when you get into your, your CBDs, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, that those units actually start getting closer to replacement cost and there starts to become a bit of profitability there for, for developers to come in and build those units. So keep that in mind. It also applies for houses. If you're looking at houses and maybe you are somewhere where there is a whole heap of land, have a look around and is this property actually below replacement cost or should you be considering buying new in that location? And I think this is a really good first ingredient to, to add into the, the cake, so to speak. The second big ingredient is picking the right location. You want a location that the population is predicted to continue to grow and a population that has a mix of industries. If you're buying into a mining town just because there's extremely high, high yields and that town's reliant on just one company to survive, it's a very big bet. I think you should be just going and buying shares in that company, seeing you are getting in bed with them so much anyway. I think when it comes to, to property investing, it is, it is and should be a much lower risk game than, than buying into one particular company. So if you can buy into a town with a mix of, mix of industries and mix of different jobs, the chances of that town continuing to see population growth is so much higher. Now, one place where you can, can see the different industries that are happening in a city is the ABS data. So the Australian Bureau of Statistics, fortunately, the census isn't that old. It was, the census data was only recently released. So you can jump in and really see how mixed the demographic and job opportunities are in that town. And that might give you a bit of a, a, an indicator of if that town's actually going to continue to see population growth into the future. The third and final recipe that I'll third and final ingredient that I want to share today is greenfield development. So what do I mean by greenfield development? I mean development with lots of open space. So when you look at Cairns, you look down to, to Gordon Vale, down to Innes Vale, there's a lot of green sugarcane fields there where developers can come in and continue to chop up that land and sell it off. And this is obviously going to keep land prices low and obviously make the difference between your your replacement cost and the cost of established properties a lot tighter. Where if you start looking at the northern beaches of Cairns, for example, we're essentially geographically gridlocked. We've got a mountain range that leads pretty much to the ocean in a bit of a triangle. And the amount of land supply out the northern beaches in Cairns is dwindling. There's probably only three or four years left of development out that way before 
that's it. There's no large scale land releases left. You look at Sydney and if you want to be in that inner city area of Sydney, you're very much confined by the ocean and the mountain ranges there. So by having a look at the different areas and seeing what greenfield development is, greenfield development areas are available, will give you a bit of an idea of the new supply that's likely to come to market. If you're in an area that's really restricted and there's nowhere really for people to, to build new houses without really starting to sprawl out from the city, then those inner properties are probably going to perform a lot better than the ones out in the outskirts where there is a lot of vacant land surrounding them. So there you have it. That's three ingredients I think you should be keeping your eye out for when looking at buying an investment property. It's the three ingredients that have really done me wonders over the last five years. And I'm sure if you keep applying them into the market, along with the other ingredients of investing, you'll also do extremely well. Mm -hmm.